We want to welcome everybody to Totally Tasty Torah. This is our last meeting for 2023. And we are here at Beth Yeshua Messianic Synagogue in Coral Springs, Florida. And we just finished shoveling snow this morning. <laughs> it was a little chilly this morning, but it, it totally amazes me that that uh, some people still, this is not cold for some people, but uh, being a former New Englander, when it gets down to 50 degrees here, it's cold. Your blood changes, right? That's what they tell me. So I'm layered, and now the people are walking around in t-shirts. So it never ceases to amaze me. When I first moved here in 91, and I was teaching, and it got down to 60, one of the first cool days of the year. And uh, I went to school that day, and it was 60, and my kids showed up in ski parkers and gloves. So anyway, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Glad everybody's with us. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We are in Parashah Vayichi. And that is Genesis chapter 47, verse 28 is where it begins. 48-28, which is... Very close to the beginning of the next chapter. 48? Chapter 47. Oh, 47. 47. But before we do that, I think we should pray. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Who would like to open us in prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just praise you and thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and for your grace. We ask, Father, Lord God, this morning that you bless us, Father, Lord God, with your word. Father, Lord God, that the anointing upon Rabbi, Lord God, just flow easily. And all comments and statements, Father, Lord God, that be a, a glory to you, Father, Lord God. We just praise you and we thank you for this opportunity to study your word. And that you continue, Lord God, being you and just showing us who you really are. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sandra. Uh, Joseph's promise to Jacob. Interesting. Cedric, can you hear me okay? Amen. Amen. Libby, you can hear okay? Give me a, a wave. All righty. A thumbs up. Thank you. Fantastic. Who would like to read? Oh, I guess I do. Nice okay. and loud. Okay. 28. Now Jacob lived in the land of Egypt for 17 years. So the days of jo Jacob, the years of his life, were 147 years. Okay. Time out. <laughs> we, did, we didn't pray. Oh. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Happy New Year. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. I'll start again. Yes. Now Jacob lived in the land of Egypt for 17 years. So the days of Jacob, the years of his life, were 147 years. As the time of Israel's death drew near, he called for his son Joseph and said to him, If I have found favor in your eyes, please put your hand under my thigh and show me faithful kindness. Please do not bury me in Egypt. When I lie down with my fathers, you must carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. So he said, I myself will do according to your word. Swear to me, he said. So he swore to him. Then Israel wrote, broke down in worship on the head of his staff. Comments, subtractions, deletions. Well, there's that put your hand under my thigh. Um, yes. yes. What's the implication of that, Libby? It's like a vow. 
disavow, but what could you say about it? I mean, what does it indicate? It's like can't cancel it. Can't cancel it. Okay, it's well, personal. It's personal. It's personal. Okay, not everybody puts your hand under your thigh. <laughs> All right. Good morning, Wisconsin. How are you? Good morning. Thank you. All right. All is well there? Yes, sir. All right. Fantastic. Good to see you. All right. Probably a little chilly. <laughs> chilly. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're now beginning at, uh, at uh, Genesis 48, 48. Excuse me, chapter 48. Yes. People don't do that anymore, right? They don't say, hey, put your hand under my thigh and make a promise. No? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm aware of, right? Not that I'm aware of, although there's stuff that goes on that I don't know. About. Anyway. And you shouldn't. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Sure. Let's go on. Okay. After these things, someone told Joseph, behold, your father is sick. So he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, with him. When someone told Jacob, saying, behold, your son Joseph has come to you, Israel summoned his strength and sat up in the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, El Shaddai appeared to me in Luz, in the land of Canaan, and blessed me. Okay. Anybody not familiar with El Shaddai? The all-sufficient. What? Be all sufficient. Not almighty. Okay. And the shin at the beginning of Shaddai the is what? It's on the mezuzah. It's on the mezuzah. Okay. The mezuzah that's on the doorpost of everybody's house, right? Yes. All right. The shin. All right. And then when the rabbis, <laughs> again, at the end of the service, frequently when they pronounce the Aaronic benediction, they hold up their hands over the congregation. Okay. Fingers separated, which I can't do. Okay. And that represents shin. The Hebrew letter shin. Okay. As in Shaddai. Okay. God Almighty. Oh, that's a letter. It's a letter. Yes. 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 A letter shin. Yes. Looks like a W. Yeah. You did that well. Okay. And my friend Leonard Nemo oh, yeah. used to do that. No, live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. I told you that story, right? Well, About Leonard? practice it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was um, practicing <laughs> Jew. He and was I... an Orthodox Jew. Yeah. We used to walk to synagogue together. Oh, I didn't know you. And uh, but the story was is that when the producers of Star Trek, because he was being a Vulcan in that series, they asked him for a symbol. And that's what he did. Oh. So. And it's God he was answered. blessing the world and nobody knew world. it. <laughs> so in verse it. two, gotta love that. Verse two. <laughs> when someone told Jacob saying a question. Yes. In verse two, yes. uh they refer to Jacob, and then they refer to Israel. So why are they changing his name there? I mean... Because they're one and the same. I know, but why aren't they being So consistent? he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, with him. And when someone told Jacob, saying, Behold, your son Joseph will come to you, Israel summoned his strength. He's referring to Jacob. But but his name by by this time his name has changed to Israel, right? Correct. So why are they referring to him as Jacob? Uh, why aren't they you, consistent? You have that list written down that you're gonna ask God and you will add to the list. <laughs> add to the list. list. Okay. He wrote it. I'm just a messenger. What's the matter with you? Okay. All right. But they it happens many times. It's a legitimate question, Diane. Okay. Many Good times God. they they are <laughs> They are used interchangeably. Okay. Four. Chapter, mm -hmm. verse four. Yes. He said to me, I'm going to make you fruitful, multiply you, and turn you into an assembly of peoples, and I will give this land to your seed after you as an everlasting possession. So now, 
your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, they are mine. Ephraim and Manasseh will be mine, just like Reuben and Simeon. Any de descendant of yours from your father after them will be yours. They will be identified by the names of their brothers for their inheritance. Mm. So, yes. So, Joseph has several uh, sons and daughters. Joseph uh, did. Yeah. Yes. But the first two belongs to, to Jacob, belongs to Israel. So they uh, he claimed they made part of the... He claimed them as his own. Yeah, but no, they were the ones. And not only that, they had, they were tribes named after them. And also, Ephraim means a uh, uh, Brookfield. Uh, he made me a uh, uh, blessed or, or fruitful. Mm -hmm. And Manasseh means he made me forget about my pain. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me, right? Okay. So, and again, um, all right, let's pick that up. Seven. Seven. Now, as for me, when I came from Hadon, Done. to my sorrow, Rachel died along the way in the land of Canaan while we were still a distance from entering Ephrath. And I buried her there. What is Ephrath? Bethlehem. 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 Okay, go ahead. And I buried her there on the way to Ephrath. That is Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Joseph said to his father, they are my sons, whom God has given me here. Then he said, please bring them to me, so I may bless them. Now Israel's eyes had grown heavy with old age. He could not see. So he brought them near to him, and he kissed them and hugged them. Then Israel said to Joseph, to see your face I didn't expect. And look, God has let me see your offspring as well. All right, so he's he's comprehending the fact that he never expected to see Joseph again, let alone Joseph's kids. Mm -hmm. He thought he had lost Joseph forever. Amen. So he's yeah. praising God and being very thankful and appreciative yeah. of the fact that he's gotten to this point in his life. So he's now seeing his grandkids. Go ahead. Well, then Joseph took him, them from his knees and bowed with his face down to the ground. Then Joseph took the two of them, Ephraim with his right hand across from Israel's left, and Manasseh with his left hand across from Israel's right. Okay, stop. Yeah. But he was blessing the younger. He was blessing the, the younger right, yes. with his right hand, mm -hmm. as opposed to vice versa. All right, let's read on. But uh, so he, the, the figure he is doing is a fish. Right? Correct. It's a fish. Oh, he's so smart. Interesting. Oh. That's, that's good. Yeah. We, we can continue. Right. right. The, the right hand. The right hand is a strong hand. It's the dominant hand. Right. And it's the, but it, it normally, it's, it's, it's the right hand that would bless the elder first, not the younger. Doesn't it say somewhere about, talk about God's righteous right hand? Is that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Why, why, why cross? That's cool. Doing that. Where does it say that? It's a fish. Uh, I know that. Well, uh, yeah, the fish has other symbolism, though. Okay, I'm not sure that's here, but let's read on. Maybe it is. Okay, to complete the sentence, it says, yeah. and brought them close to him. But Israel stretched out his right hand and placed it upon Ephraim's head, though he was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, crossing his hands, though Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has shepherded me throughout my life to this day, the angel who redeemed me from all evil, may he bless the boys, and may they be called by my name and by the name of my fathers, Abraham and, Abraham and Isaac. May they multiply to a multitude in the midst of the land. Go on. Go on. <clears throat> when Joseph saw that his father placed his right hand upon Ephraim's head, it was wrong in his eyes. So he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to his father, not like that, my father, because this one's a firstborn. Put your right hand upon his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also will become a people and he also will become great. But his younger brother will become greater than he and his seed will be the fullness of the nations. 
Then he blessed them that day, saying, In you shall Israel bless by saying, May God make you like Ephraim and like Manasseh. Sound familiar? Yes. 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 That's what happened to Joseph. He was like, you know, the youngest, and he he was more blessed. It's like history repeating itself. Yes, Esau and that Jacob. happens over and over again. Yes, Jill? She said Esau and Jacob. Esau and Jacob. Okay. All right. Again, God has a plan. Yes. Amen? Amen. Okay. Carols. So despite all the challenges, God still blesses. Uh, uh, in other words, in Jacob, Israel, how did he know what he was saying? I mean, how do we know that he was making the right decision? Oh, because it had happened to Jacob should have understood more than anyone else. What's the influence? Who's he, what voice is he hearing? Spirit of God. Oh, right. Ruach. Ruach Adonai. When he was blind, and yet he had a, a holy unction. Mm -hmm to bless them in the way that he did and when he did and a little bit later in the chapter okay. he, he also blesses Pharaoh which is crazy that's correct yeah. he also blessed Pharaoh and why would he bless Pharaoh Man, every time we see the word Pharaoh we have a negative connotation mm -hmm. okay but what do we know about this Pharaoh he was very kind because he was extremely kind and he was extremely appreciative of everything that Yosef had done but he was still the boss. He was still the boss. And yet he, But yet oh, and the only thing that Pharaoh had to be concerned about was what what he was having for dinner. Because everything else Joseph was in charge of. Right? He didn't have to worry about a thing. And the same is true when Joseph was in charge of Potiphar's house. The same thing was true when Joseph was in charge of the prison. Okay. Those people that were supposed to be running those things didn't have a care in the world. Because Joseph was in charge. Amen. So that's sort of like a lesson to us. You think? Just let God be in charge. Let God <laughs> be in charge. <laughs> Instead of us trying to be okay. in charge. So exactly. This is like uh, the the shadow of God and the shadow of Yeshua. It's, it's Always. Okay. And that brings me to an interesting point. Okay, because at one point I said to you that I wanted at one point to share with you the analogies uh, of the whole thing about Joseph and Yeshua. Okay, I mentioned a, a, a couple of them. But briefly speaking, both men were greatly loved by their father. As shepherds, they both took care of their father's sheep. Both Joseph and Yeshua were sent to their brothers by their father. Both men were ridiculed and rejected by their brothers. Mm -hmm. For sure. Both were taken to Egypt. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yeshua as a child, as a baby. Um, both were sold for the price of a slave. Yeah. Okay. Both were falsely accused and condemned. Um, they were prisoners. One was saved and the other was lost. Both were bound in chains. Both men were 30 years old at the beginning of their public recognition. Both were tempted. But while, how was Joseph tempted? Was his wife. Yeah, but was he tempted or was he trapped? He might, have, he might have been a beautiful woman. He might have met a beautiful woman? No, she might have been a beautiful woman. Oh, Potiphar's wife, yeah. Yeah. He might have been tempted. But he ran really fast. Right, because he was obedient. But you know. Well, that's what Paul tells us to do with sexual immorality. Flee! <laughs> Uh, both were stripped of their robes. Joseph was in a dungeon. Je 
Jesus was condemned to death before descending into hell. I take a little exception with that. He didn't descend into hell. Correct. Um, both forgave those who wronged them while men plotted evil against them. Both saved not only their people, but also many others. Because Joseph's actions helped the nations of the world survive the famine, Avraham to bless all nations, God completely fulfilled his promise and commanded to make disciples of all nations. And like Yeshua, Yosef endured rejection and persecution, yet like Messiah, he forgave. Joseph uh, was around them, but were also a blessing to those who hurt them. Amen? Mm -hmm. And it goes on. It goes on. You know, um, I have one last one more. It's Goshen. 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 Goshen is compared to paradise. Okay. And the seven years of the three months are compared to the seven years of tribulation. That are. Uh, okay. Lots of comparisons. Okay. Yeah. Good morning. How about Shalom? Okay. Let's pick up. Uh, okay. 21, 48, 21 is where we are. Yes. Then Israel said to Joseph, look, I am about to die, but God will be with you and will bring you back to the land of your fathers. Now I myself give you one portion more than your brothers, that which I took from the hand of the Amorites with my sword and my bow. Go ahead, now on chapter 49. Jacob called his sons and said to them, gather together so that I can tell you what will happen to you in the last days. Be assembled and listen, sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel, your father. Okay, so let's abbreviate this, okay? He's telling each of the sons, he's prophesying over them. Amen? So again, uh, read the beginning sentence of each of those sections, verse 3. Okay, Reuben, my firstborn are you, my vigor and firstborn of my power and endowed with extra di dignity, endowed with extra strength. Okay, Simeon, verse 5. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of violence are their knives. In their secret counsel may my soul not enter. In their contingent may my honor never be united. Okay, jumping ahead to 8. Judah, so you are. Your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on your enemy's neck. Your father's sons will bow down to you. Go on. Nine. A lion's cub is Judah, from the prey, my son. You have gone up. He crouches, li lies down like a lion, or like a lioness. Who would rouse him? Okay. Angle one. The scepter will not pass from Judah, nor are the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs will come. And who is that? The king is Mashiach. Mashiach, Yeshua. Amen? But also, you know... Um... It says in the next line, to him will be the obedience of the peoples. Judah, Judah received a, a tremendous blessing just because he rescued Joseph from a... Precisely. From, yep. Okay. So, so he, he was... So mercy. Bro. Exacto mundo. Okay. Um, Sandy, I, I welcome Sandy. I'm not familiar. Where are you coming to us from? Are you here locally? Can you hear me okay? You're muted at the moment. No, Sandy, can you give me a thumbs up or some kind of wave? Let me know you can hear me. Ah, there you are. All right, fantastic. Where are you located, Sandy? Oh, yeah, you're muted, so we can't hear you. You're on mute. Go to the bottom left-hand corner and unmute. If you can. Yeah, it's okay. No, she's on the screen. All right. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can hear you great. Where are you located? Sorry, I'm in Tamarack. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, well, I, I, 
I was just in my bed and I decided to <laughs> jump on. I'm sorry. I'm not prepared to be on camera. Well, all right. It's no okay. problem. That's Sandy, okay. thank you for joining us. All right. God bless you. All thank right. You. All right. Okay. Let's pick this up here. And again, to him will be the obedience of all people. <laughs> Finding his falls to the, to the vine. His donkey's colt to the choice vine. He washes his garments in wine, and in the blood of grapes his robe. His eyes are darker than wine, and teeth that are whiter than milk. Okay, and again, what is this? What would you refer to this as a category? It's messianic prophecy. Amen, right? Let's read on. 13. Zebulun will dwell by the seashore and be by a harbor for ships. His 14. Issachar is a strong boned donkey lying down between two saddlebags. He saw that a resting place was good. Okay, 16. Dan will judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Let Dan be a serpent beside a road, a viper beside a path. Who 19. Gad, attackers will attack him, but he will attack their heels. Asher, 20. Asher, which, which is his food. He will provide del delicacies fit for a king. Naphtali is a doe let loose who offers words of beauty. A fruitful son is Joseph, a fruitful son beside a springs. Daughters walk, walk along a wall. The archers were bitter and shot arrows and were hostile towards them. Yet his bow was always filled and his arms quick moving by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob. Okay, let's jump down. 27. Benjamin is a ravening wolf. In the morning he devours spoils and in the evening divides plunder. Okay. These are the tribes of Israel. So we, yeah, we got them all. We got all 12. The Levites. Let's read on. Let's read on. 28. 28. These are the tribes of Israel, 12 in all. And this is what their father spoke to them. He blessed them. Each one he blessed with a suitable blessing. Then he charged them and said to them, I am about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, Machpelah. that is next to Mamre, Mamre. Mamre, and in the land of Canaan, the field that Abraham brought, bought from Ephron the Hittite as a pro property for burial, the burial. There they buried Abraham and his wife Sarah. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, and there I buried Leah. The field was purchased along with the cave in it from the sons of Het. When Jacob finished commanding his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed, then breathed his last and was gathered to his people. Gathered to his people. I love that. Mm -hmm. That term. Okay. Who else was described that way? Who was gathered to his people? Moses. When all was said and done. 50, please. Joseph fell upon his father's face, wept over him, and kissed him. Then Joseph commanded his servants, the, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. They took 40 days for him, because that is how long embalming takes. And Egypt wept 70 days. Any comments about that? So can we say that? I'm sorry. Alex, go ahead. I'll oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Libby. I was just going to say, can we say that Jacob, when, when it says he was gathered to his family, his relatives, um, could we say that they all went to Abraham's bosom? That's what it sounds like. Yeah. He was the first one to be the first, I guess he might have been the first Jewish person to be embalmed. Because the Egyptians used to get embalmed, but Jewish people didn't. And I think that was just because they needed his body to last to carry him across there without it um, deteriorating and smelling. It wasn't going to be buried right away. Yeah. Because, because Joseph promised to bring him back to the land of Canaan. Amen. What did the, what did the Jews do? They didn't they embalm. Didn't. What did they do? You don't know? Don't embalm. Buried in a shroud in a pine box. Get him in the grave quick before they stink. He stinketh. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Lazarus. I mean, Lazarus. So no what he said? Know? What? 
which made Lazarus's resurrection even that more miraculous. You know about back then? Yeah. 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 Sure, right, because he was already in the grave. He was already in the grave for days. Yeah. For days. Precisely. So when he called him forth, okay, they said, you know, beware. All right, let's move on. Just one quick yes. comment. I Go think ahead. it's so interesting that Egypt wept with them for 70 days. So they're weeping for an Israelite. They respected Precisely. the... That would happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not? Okay. Um <laughs> That's an interesting point because already there was some anti-Jew sentiment because it said that when they were going to eat, the Jews, the Egyptians didn't typically sit with the Hebrews, remember? Well, even prior to Jacob showing up in Egypt, uh, which, which, which made the leadership that was given to Joseph even that much more incredible. Okay, only the work of God could have done that. God's amen. favor. Yep, amen. Favor, right? So, again, when Joseph made it very clear to Pharaoh, my people are coming, he's, uh, and he said, they are shepherds. Okay, and this is like the lowliest of low of humanity. And they had sincere disrespect for them, almost like, like, like many of the Jewish people had for the, for the, uh, um, the woman at the well was a yeah, Samaritan. Samaritan. Okay. They felt the same way about the Samaritans. They were definitely a low, lower on the food chain as far as humanity was concerned. What a, okay. what, what a coincidence that these lower on the food chain would rise up to high positions, huh? Precisely. Precisely. <laughs> so, so it does make rather miraculously the fact that, number one, Pharaoh had obviously profound respect for Joseph. Pharaohs flourished under Joseph, yes, okay, and and he knew it and was eternally grateful. So uh, may have put two and two together to determine that whatever Joseph had, it came from Jacob, that it was all part of the family line. It was uh, amazing blessings. It took place there. Let's read on. Four. Where are we? Four. 54. Verse four. Yes. When the days of formal weeping passed, Joseph spoke to Pharaoh's house, saying, If I found favor in your eyes, please say in Pharaoh's ears, My father made me take an oath, saying, Behold, I am about to die in my tomb, which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. There you must bury me. So now, please allow me to go up and bury my father and then return. Pharaoh said, go up and bury your father, just as he made you swear on earth. Oath. So Joseph went up to bury his father. Also, all of Pharaoh's servants, the elders of his household, and all the elders of the land of Egypt went up with him, along with all of Joseph's house, his brothers in his father's household. Only their children and their flocks and cattle were left in the land of Goshen. Char chariots and horsemen also went up with him. It was a very impressive company. Can you imagine that funeral procession? Have you been in traffic and all of a sudden there's, you know, the, the police close off the intersection and there's a procession, of, a funeral procession, you know, and sometimes it's like five cars. Sometimes it's like 40 cars, right? So you can imagine this was an impressive, impressive procession. Go on, verse 10. Yes. It was when like they a came... king died. Sorry, it was like a king died, you know? Precisely, Rebecca. Okay. When they came to the threshing floor of the bramble on the other side of the Jordan, they mourned there, a very great and solemn lamentation. He observed seven days of mourning for his father. When the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning ritual at the threshing floor of the prickly bush, they said, a solemn mourning ritual this is for the Egyptians. That is why it is named Abel Mizram, which is on the other side of the Jordan. So Jacob's son did for him just as he commanded them. His sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, the field that Abraham bought as property as a property for burial from Ephraim the Hittite next to Mamre. Mamre. Remember the whole situation when Abraham bartered for the cave? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they wanted to give it to him, but he insisted on paying. He insisted on paying. This is all okay coming to fruition now because okay now he owns the property. Okay? Uh -huh. So this is all taking place there. Okay. 14. 14. After burying his father, Joseph returned to Egypt. He and his brothers and all those who went up with him to bury his father. Okay, what is now of concern for the brothers? Joseph is gone. I mean, Jacob is gone. The father, the overseer. Rut row. <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> row. Because they only know what's in their hearts. It's still impossible for them to imagine the level of forgiveness and mercy that Joseph has. Precisely. Well put. So, yeah, they're all of a sudden now, daddy's gone. Okay. No, there's no, you know, it's very possible that they will be concerned about the fact that revenge is now Joseph's for everything that he did, they did to him. Okay, let's read on. Yeah. 15. 15. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father had died, they said, maybe Joseph will be hostile towards us and pay us back in full for all the evil we showed him. Can you imagine all those years when they had deceived their father and and he said, and they had even convinced themselves that Joseph was dead. Did they know he was dead? No. Did they know he was dead? I got to say that right here. To say that with a Brooklyn accent. Okay. Uh, no. It's a wonderful example of how when you, when you are not able to confess your sins, you don't have a sense of clarity. You don't have peace. So they kind of lived in torment all mm -hmm. of those years. But again, uh, and again, I relate this to my sports years, especially football. When you get injured, uh, sometimes you think, well, maybe if I stay injured, then I don't have to necessarily work out and practice, right? In other words, you can convince yourself that whatever injury you had is real, or maybe it isn't. In other words, if you tell yourself a lie and you tell it long enough, then it becomes truth yeah. in your head. All right, so they're convincing themselves. They may have actually thought that he was dead, but in the back of their minds, they know the truth. Let's go on. 16. So they charged Joseph saying, before his death, your father gave a command saying, thus you must say to Joseph, Please forgive, I beg you, the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they treated you wrongly. Therefore, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Then Joseph wept when they spoke to him, and his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. For you him understand. I'm sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Okay. But you've heard me emphasize that first word. But how significant yeah. that is. Yeah. But go on. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid, for am I in the place of God? Yes, you yourselves planned evil against me. God planned it for good, in order to bring about what it is this day, to preserve the lives of many people. So now don't be afraid. I myself will provide <laughs> food for you and your little ones. So he re reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Okay. That whole section there. Okay, verse, where is it? 19. 19. 19, all the way through to 21. Okay, do you understand the power and significance of what is going on there? Okay. Um, again, the whole beginning of A, Joseph being in, is in Egypt to begin with. Then, Joseph and taking the whole rest of the clan and migrating to Egypt, okay, is the beginning of what? It's memory. The next 400 years, right? And so after this parashah today, we're beginning next week, 
in what in the book of Exodus, 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 you understand how the Lord is working all of this and what the big picture plan is. Okay, even though he waited 400 years to send Moshe, a new Pharaoh, to, to extract his people, bring him in, and kind of revert their whole way of thinking and providing them with everything that we read in Torah. Amen? It is just, talk about a, uh, a metamorphosis. Okay, what's going on here? I love the fact that whatever they planned for evil against him, God planned it for good. And he recognized that. Yeah, well, we can bring that to our own lives too. No matter what comes against us, God yep. plans it for good to preserve the lives of many people. And we can pray that for the persecuted church because persecution always spreads the gospel. We want to have that. Pray that, that the good would preserve the lives eternally for the people in those countries, including this one coming up. Amen. Amen, indeed. All right. I let's... think it kind of goes with what I told you the other day. A friend said that um, we have to remember that we tend to, to function on a day-to-day -day basis. But we have to remember that the Lord has it already all planned okay. out. So that whether we have a bad day or a good day, you know, to hang in there because he's he's already got it planned out. So, okay. me, uh, what I call my attention from this the, from the chapter uh, forty nine is the verse uh, forty eight nineteen. From chapter forty nine. Forty eight nineteen. So nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. But his father refused and said, I know my son, I know he also will become a people and he also will become a great. But this younger brother will become greater than he and his seed will be the fulfillment of the nation. So in Hebrew, this word is uh, Melo Hagoim. Melo Hagoim. Melo HaGoyim is the plenitude of the Gentiles. Yes. So I think that that what I what I understand is that the seed of Ephraim and Manasseh is going to spark for all the nation, for you know pagan nations, um, all kind of nation around the world, mm -hmm. and the, the bless of Abraham is going to reach this the whole nation. So this is Melo Hagoin, that all nations are going to reach the bless of Abraham. And what do we know about Messiah Yeshua as far as the the uh, as far as the what he said about the brothers and specifically Judah? What are we, what's another name that we have for Yeshua? Uh, Lion. Lion of Judah. Amen. <laughs> Okay. 22. 22. Joseph remained in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw the third generation of Ephraim's sons, also the sons of Machir, Machir, Machir and Nasa's son, who were born upon Joseph's knees. <clears throat> then Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely take notice of you and will bring you up from this land to the land that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. <clears throat> me. Then Joseph made Israel's son swear an oath, saying, When God takes notice of you, you will bring my bones up from here. So Joseph died at 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. Okay, so Joseph was also embalmed because they had to take him from Egypt to Canaan. Okay. All right. Well, we got through that fairly quickly. Um, and uh, so again, next week we begin Shamot. For the name for Shamot translation, for more names. The names. Now these are the names. Okay, Exodus one. All right, and um, 
Um, but again, the whole, which uh, again, putting it into perspective, Passover is going to be here in a heartbeat. Okay, and Passover is what is, what are we celebrating tomorrow? New Year's. New Year's. Okay, but it is the, not the Jewish calendar New Year. It's right. the New Year for God, right? It's, what? It's the New Year of God, because he starts in the spring. Passover is the New Year. Okay, it is the spiritual. Okay, you understand that we birthed that the nation of Israel is about to occur because the Lord is taking them out and putting within them everything that he wants us to know via Torah. Amen? Amen. So again, I emphasize the whole point. It's the beginning of the beginning. Okay? So keep that all in mind. Do anybody have any questions regarding this? And I want you here, if you're here with us, Wisconsin, you're, you're too far away. But there are donuts on the table that have to be consumed. <laughs> but I want to wish everybody, yes, thank you, a very happy new year. Um, and as Susan was saying earlier, that despite the negativity that we see around us before we pray, and we are surrounded by it at the moment because if you are allowing yourself to be immersed in what is going on nationally, internationally, okay, when you see all of that around us, you sometimes may think, where is God? He is completely in control. Amen. He knows exactly what he's doing. And sometimes... It's hard for us mere humanoids to realize that. Okay. It is Rabbi. very difficult, especially with what's going on in the land of Israel. But, but you know, with back to your idea, it does remind us that this earth don't belong to us. Still, we are waiting for a promised land for a, for a, you know, from the eternity. This is no our final point or Find Precisely. Precisely. You said somebody had a question? Yeah. Rabbi. Oh, yes, Jeff, go ahead, please. What do you know about Lazarus? Um, I suppose, I mean, I think by culture, he was supposed to spend three days in in his tomb. I mean, to, you know, I guess at that time, guarantee that he was dead. So what did he do for three days? Was he with God and then got pulled back? Or do we know anything what happened afterwards? Anybody want to answer that? If I had to guess, Abraham's bosom again. Okay. Where is it that, that, that we understand, technically speaking, that if when you leave here, where is it that you go? Shaul, right? Paradise? Shaul. That's not hell. It's a waiting okay. place, right? Yeah. But your spirit goes back to God where it came from. Your... See, I, I think there's a difference between pre-Jesus resurrection and after Jesus resurrection. Paul said, right. to be out of my body is to be with Christ. Precisely. Precisely. Yeah. So um, I always revert to Yeshua on the cross to the thief next to him, and he turned to him. Okay, the one who recognized that he was the person that he was, that Yeshua was, and he said to him, what? You'll be with me today. Today you will be with me in... Okay, he didn't say you were going to be anywhere else. And again, I will refer to the definition of the word paradise, a Persian word. You have any okay. idea what it means? The garden? It is a walled-in garden. Can you imagine walking with Yeshua in his walled-in garden? Is it going back to the Garden of Eden then? Perhaps. It's Yeshua's garden. For sure. Okay. <clears throat> Walk with me. Does that answer your question, Jeff?
Say it again, Rabbi. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Yeah, you, you know, I was, I was like, it, I'd be bummed if I was with you know God and hanging out in paradise. All of a sudden, he pulled me back and said, "Yeah, I got to go back to that part." <laughs> to Earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it was no, wasn't three days. Uh, was it four, four days. Four days. Right. So after four days. That's why he said he's clinical, in the... clinical leave. The, the person is dead. Dead. Correct. Go back. Yeah, no, there was no dead. doubt he was dead. He was completely dead. dead. Completely, completely dead. dead. Completely dead. Not only that, no he was person. dead. He was dead. Completely dead. D E D. Dead. <laughs> completely dead. <laughs> dead. Completely dead. <laughs> Okay. Just in case anybody had any doubts about the miracle, you know, just in yeah, case. Right. Oh, maybe he was a little he's alive. Delayed. No, he was dead. He, <laughs> he delayed in the first place because they had called for him to come sooner. Okay, but again, he knew what the deal was. Okay. And I'm thinking a little bit, you know, with Lazarus uh, and also Judas had seen this and thought, Try and kill him. He just resurrected Lazarus. You can't kill this guy. Bad idea. Hands on the Latin morning, I'll take flight to the house of the